Good morning, everyone. We've got a packed house today. Can I have Pastor Rodney Osborne? Open us up with invocation. Thank you. Our God and Father of all, we come, God, this morning to tell you thank you. Thank you, God, for this precious thing that we call life, God. Thanking you for giving us another day. Thanking you, God, for each and every individual that has assembled here today, God. We ask that you bless uh, each family that's represented. We ask, God, that you bless these uh, uh, county leaders that are here today. Bless and, and keep their families, God. Continue to give them the the courage and the godly wisdom, God, to lead the residents of this county, God, in a way that is pleasing unto you, God. We pray, God, for all of our law enforcement and our first responders, God. And, oh, God, uh, we pray blessings over the victims over in Buffalo as well as in California, God. And, God, again, we tell you thank you, God, and we will never forget to continue to give you the praise, the glory, and all of the honor which you so deserve. It is in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Commissioner Tobias. Please stand and join me in the play. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Can I get a motion for approval of minutes for the March 3rd zoning meeting? So moved. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Tobias, second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, moving on to resolutions. Can we have the folks up that are gonna receive the Emergency Medical Service Week resolution? Come on up. It's okay with you. I'll go ahead and read the resolution and then yes, you can speak. All right. Whereas emergency medical professionals and volunteers provide medical care to victims of sudden life threatening injuries and illnesses, often under stressful conditions and in high risk situations to save lives. And whereas the 2022 National Emergency Medical Service Week theme, EMS Rising to the Challenge, reminds us that Brevard County's residents and guests benefit daily from the knowledge, skill, and judgment of paramedics, emergency medical technicians, firefighters, dispatchers, educators, administrators, emergency physicians, emergency nurses, and others who encompass the emergency medical services system. And whereas emergency medical personnel must rapidly assess, manage, and effectively provide care in unpredictable situations requiring, requiring life and death judgments, and whereas Brevard County's EMS team unselfishly serves at the front line of health care when responding to man-made and natural disasters at the local, state, and national levels. And whereas a recognition is due for the emergency medical services system for its accomplishments and contributions to improve public welfare through health care, medical transportation, injury prevention, education, disaster response, homeland security, and other initiatives that reduce health care costs and save lives. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida does hereby unanimously proclaim the week of May 15, 2022 through May 21, 2022 as Emergency Medical Services Week, done, ordered, and adopted in regular session the 17th day of May, 2022. So can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Tobia. Second. Second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. The floor is yours, Chief. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the recognition of EMS Week and our hardworking men and women of Brevard County Fire Rescue. Uh, absolutely, the last two years have been a true statement to the dedication and commitment that the members of BCFR provide to the community. Uh, but our success would not be possible without the support provided by the citizens, the commission, the county manager, and our public safety director. Uh, Brevard County Fire Rescue is an innovative organization which focuses on community health and safety. Chief Dominguez and our team work diligently for all of our success. In fact, 
Uh, through the focus of high quality CPR, we have doubled our cardiac arrest survival rates in Brevard County in the last two and a half years, doubled. When the men and women of Brevard County Fire Rescue show up to work, they never know what kind of situation they could be facing. As we saw last Thursday, the miraculous rescue of a construction worker who was trapped in quicksand-like mud up to his chin at a construction site. I could not be more proud of the commitment and determination displayed on the scene that day, and that was just a small example of what they do every day for our community. Uh, we can appreciate your continued support uh, for the important work that we do for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the next resolution. Can we have the folks up to receive the um, bo safe boating week? And is it okay that you speak after we read the resolution? Okay, great. Whereas Brevard County with its unique weather and water resources offers special water related recreational activities to its residents and people from around the world, which include recreational boating, personal watercraft and paddlecraft activities. And whereas the county's 71 miles of saltwater tidal coastline and 541 acres of inland rivers and lagoons provide for recreational and economic development to the area. And whereas the state of Florida is known as the boating capital of the world, leading with more than 959,000 registered boats, with Brevard County having over 34,000 registered boats. Whereas every year lives are lost in boating accidents in spite of the educational efforts of the U.S. Coast Guard, the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary, and the U.S. Power Squadrons, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, Brevard County Natural Resources Boating and Waterways, the Brevard County Sheriff's Office, and other local agencies. And whereas federal, state, and local agencies and private companies and groups have combined their efforts to reduce boating accidents by developing and executing safety training programs such as Boat America, course taught locally in Brevard County. And whereas the sponsors of these safety programs have focused their efforts towards the youth and general public of Florida, urging them to enhance boating pleasure and avoid possible loss of life while reducing the loss of property. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, does hereby designate May 21st through 27th, 2022, as Safe Boating Week in Brevard County and urges all citizens to join in learning and practicing safe boating by wearing a life jacket, taking boating education courses, getting a vessel safety check, operating their vessels responsibly, safely, and soberly, and obeying Coast Guard regulations established after September 11th relating to Homeland Security. Done, ordered, and adopted in regular session the 17th day of May AD 2022. Can I get a motion to approve? I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett, a second by Commissioner Tobiah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. So we want to thank uh, the Commission very much for supporting this Safe Boating Week. As you know, um, we live in a beautiful area, and after post-COVID, the number of boats purchased exceeded what had been purchased in the past tech decade. Um, and with that, we the amount of drownings that have happened, 85% um, of them had no boating safety education formal education at all. So thank you very much. We hope that people will take the safe boating class. It will become a requirement for those that are born after 1988 um, to have that in order to operate a motorized uh, vessel. So thank you very much for the proclamation. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Do we have a
All right, moving on to consent. I have any, could the commission want anything pulled off consent? No, no, no. I have two cards. <clears throat> I have other cards in case things were pulled, but I have two comment cards for F19 and F27. So can I get a motion to approve consent minus F19 and F27? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Tobia, second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, F19. Phil? Phil Ketchlin? Take your time. I apologize, I've been slowed down a little for a while here. You're fine. Good morning, I'm here on behalf of the BCOA. I know that at some point in time you're going to be discussing this as a subject matter, but I'm not sure exactly where it's going to fit into the situation. One of the things under discussion you are is changing the number of meetings per month or per year on the situation. You formed this body about 11 years ago and really we're made up of a whole bunch of groups and so on from the um, government by League of Cities, Triad for the police, medical, we have the, the physicians in Brevard, the uh, health department and the hospitals are involved in our board, United Way, AARP, and Senior Resource Alliance is just some of them. And every month we meet and so on and go over the problems and everything that are currently going on relative to within our county. We've always had speakers there to share the information and also our notes and so on are also then shared with the rest of you. But um, we have speakers there recently like in guardianship, um, a weed. There's a new source in Brevard County now to provide assistance for seniors, uh, a low income for having mortgage problems and so on to try to uh, prevent foreclosure. And so we were able to bring them on board and have talks with them. We do monthly news articles and so on now. We've set up a program for the last four years where every month we have the section in uh, Senior Life where we actually publish help articles and so on else for the seniors we have in our area. Uh, and that's been anything from Alzheimer's, fraud, um, senior needs, you can name it. Uh, as it comes on up and, and problems arise, so do we come down and speak on this. We also have put together an annual page that's been the last several years in the Boomer's Guide which I'm sure you've all seen, which is put out by Senior Life as a great resource for everything else. And we provide a page in there every year now, and so on as far as demographics relative to our county. Frankly, um, right now, um, the above 60 population has moved from back when we first started a few years ago to 25%, this last thing has 26. And the latest uh, demographics from DEOA show we'll be at 33% of the population this, this coming year. And so this is an ongoing section of what you are having to see and deal with every year and so on. By comparison, if we take a look at the, uh, uh, the under 18, which are very important to us, um, they have, they're moving from the 26% down to, uh, to, to uh, basically to 25%. So this is, an, uh, such seniors are continuing to grow. Even on a state level, we have a high, much higher demographic of seniors of, of, the, of the entire state. So this has there been a very big area and an impact zone which you, people are going to be seeing more and more of. Uh, we think of the very, very important to the economy, as you naturally know. Uh, a lot of money comes in from seniors and so on, a lot of the housing and everything of this nature. Uh, and as such, I want you to, to let you know that we very much uh, wish that not only that we can continue for that, but I think we're a very important resource that we even Thank now are being able to utilize. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, this item was for the budget change request. Did commission have any comments or questions? All right, can I get a motion? I have a motion for approval of F-19 by Commissioner Tobias. Second. 
Second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item F27. Mary Peel. So uh, good morning, Marie Peel, uh, Vice Chair, Libertarian Party, Brevard County, resident of COCO. Um, a little over a year ago, a fire assessment was passed and there was also with that motion a vote to do a audit of the fire department. And part of the reason I had requested that is because I appreciate greatly what the fire department does and I feel that the safety of the firefighters and of the people of the Brevard County depends on um, there being a budget that matches what they need and that it's followed and the spending matches if there's issues that that there's an imbalance then that actually puts them at danger and their ability to help the people of Brevard at danger so there's a president of internal audits um, that have come before this board that look at the budget spending and practices and give ratings of risk and recommendations um, based on that audit what is presented today is a fire rescue data analysis it's 25 pages of comparative analysis of salaries justification for the assessment spending deficit charts a very broad overview of the revenue of the um, sources that go into the fire department and ems and analysis of fire rescue turnover and exit interviews well all that information is very important it is not an audit of the fire department so I would say that based on what the board voted on and requested that what was received doesn't actually match what was asked for. Um, and again, I greatly appreciate what the fire department does, but I want to see that they are well budgeted and taken care of. And if they're having to go above their reserves, um, then maybe there's a reason, something we need to look at. Thank you. All right, I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Pritchett, second by Commissioner Tobiah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, I have nothing further on consent that wasn't pulled. So we'll move on to public comments. I have a lot of cards. Charles Violi. And after Charles, it'll be Captain Charles Robert Muncie, Jr. You just state your name for the record, please. I appreciate the opportunity to speak here today regarding Ordinance 74-102 and 102.5. I am 74 years old, and, and I, this one mistake is the only blemish on my record. Arrested 22 years ago, I have no victims, I have served my sentence, and I'm not on probation. I have family and friends who have lived here in Brevard County since the 1970s. They are the only reason I remain here in Brevard. In addition, I am a taxpayer, college graduate, and a veteran. I have lived in Brevard County since 2012, and for the past seven years, I have lived in a home I own in a retirement community. During this time, I have served on our HOA and continue to serve on our neighborhood watch. I have been personally introduced to Sheriff Wayne Ivey, as well as our city mayor and all city council members. It is not easy to be here today because not only uh, me, but my friends and family are intimidated by the system, making them afraid to uh, speak up in my behalf. When other people go to work, shopping, to a doctor or church, they do not experience the same feelings of fear or anxiety as I do. It is an awful feeling to have to live in constant fear. I, will I violate the ordinance today and never go back home? The proximity restrictions prohibit my ability to travel within the county. There are no maps or lists locations that tell me if I am too close to restricted areas. And as for restricted areas, I have no need or interest to go to a school, playground, parks, or daycare centers. When I need to travel to a doctor, grocery store, barber, or restaurant, do, I don't know if they're in the restricted areas. In the recent amendment that allows businesses to self-certify that they are a park or a playground only makes it more frightening for me to know where to go. As an American citizen, I can only hope that more care goes into our lawmakings. Do they meet our constitutional requirements? Or will they violate any person's human or civil rights before they are enacted? Are we using the correct data to make all these decisions? Are these laws actually producing safety or excessive punishment, as well as wasting police time and our taxpayer dollars? 
keeping in mind that all lives matter. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Tobias. Thank, thank, quick question. I, I, I'm sorry. I, are, are you the are you the victim here? No, no. Okay. It sounded it sounded awfully. It sounded very very close to you claiming you were a victim up here. I well, just want to make well, that clear. It, well, you, it's it's it, it, you, you feel that way because of the um, the requirements. You, you don't know where to go. Okay. So the situation. It, yeah. You feel as though you're a victim. Like a victim. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Captain Charles Robert Muncie Jr. And after uh, Captain Charles Vincent Rinaldi. If you could just state your name, please. Can you just state your name, please, for the record when you speak? Uh, I'm, I'm Captain Charles Robert Muncie Jr., United States Navy, retired. Thank you. Okay. I'm here to address the Brevard County Ordinance Concerning Registered Citizens. Uh, I am a resident of Port St. John. I want to thank you for partially restoring my constitutional rights to come here and provide a brief commentary on the revised Brevard County Ordinance that restricts registered citizens. By the way, the revised ordinance is still based on false information this is not opinion, but facts provided by professional researchers, facts that were provided to the commissioners earlier this year. I moved to Brevard County in 2003 to help my aging parents. I had my retirement home built in Port St. John. Since then, I have seen both my mother and my father go on to their reward. My son and my daughter's families have now both relocated to Brevard and have their homes here. I am a registered citizen from an offense in Virginia. I have never had a sexual offense in Florida, yet I am designated a predator in Florida, not in Virginia. I am no longer registered in Florida. My daughter, the victim, long ago resolved the situation and we get along fine just now. I have been active in community affairs both here and in Virginia, I was released from probation 11 years early. We are, let's see. what must politicians do to control people and their dissent? Avoid abstract ideas, constantly appeal to just a few ideas, give only one side of an argument, pick out one special enemy for vilification. This approach worked for Adolf Hitler and got millions of Jews murdered. We are still seeing a similar approach used today dealing with registered citizens. When my daughter first moved to Florida, I borrowed an RV for her to live in. When she needed to pick up some groceries, when I needed to pick up some groceries for her, she had to come out to U.S. Highway 1 to pick them up by foot because she was in Manatee Hammock Park. While recovering from a stay in the hospital, I was one day trying to get my strength back by walking with crutches. My neighbor's son was walking the other direction carrying a cello case. I congratulated him, the result of a talk he and his dad and I had. A neighborhood biddy reported me to the sheriff because I was within a thousand feet of a tot lot I spent four months in jail, three in Virginia, for a violation of the ordinance. During that time, my mother had to be taken out of her home and put into assisted living, uh, and while there, she passed away. Commissioner Tobias. Okay, thank you. If I may, I'm sorry, we do have pending litigation involving this individual, so I just would like to bring that to the attention of the board. Thank you, thank if you I very may, much. Uh, sure. Captain Muncie. Uh, yep. Are you too a victim here, in your opinion? No. Okay. And and second of all, uh, you're very quick to point out your uh, service to the country. What you did gloss over was what happened in in Virginia. Uh, do you want to, you know, you yeah, use the word good. registered. Do you do you want to go over? Uh, and I'd rather you not, but. Do you I, want to go over I, what I, caused I, you to be a registered citizen? I could tell you some basic stuff. Uh, my wife and I met in the Navy. I don't think that had anything to do with what 
It sure did. Well, see, that's the problem. It's your opinion. Thank you very much. I've, thank you very much. If you want to talk to me, I'll, I'll meet you in your office. No, no, absolutely not. I reserve comment. Vincent Rinaldi. And after Vincent, Patty Panzerino. Good morning. I'm here to speak about Section 74102B, more specifically the amendment Section 74102.5. This amendment, which was passed without allowing the citizens whom it affects to speak, permits any business to self-certify their park. This alone defies common sense, since a business is not a park under any circumstances. This amendment is unfair and probably illegal, not only to registered citizens, but also to the businesses that find themselves within the 1,000-foot buffer. After a business self-declares and the other business within that buffer zone loses potential business. I would argue that the commissioner has no right to force a business in this county to possibly lose money. Your job is to make this county better for all. This amendment fails to do that in many ways. In your attempt to continually punish me for a crime I did my time for, you are, in fact, hurting and punishing other law-abiding citizens of this county. In addition, the original ordinance was, has prohibited me from obtaining a notary in order to file a, excuse me, let me back up. The, the amendment fails to do this in many ways. Um, in addition, I wanted to come to the county offices to put my house in a trust for estate planning purposes, which is my desire and right to do. To do this, I had to obtain a notary. Well, can't go to my bank to obtain that notary because it's within 1,000 feet of a park. So I cannot conduct normal business that any citizen of this county is permitted to do. This is one example of many that I can offer that proves this ordinance hurts and punishes other individuals. Behind me, there's a woman in a wheelchair. Her name is Patty. And uh, I care for her. I am her um, life partner. And this original, the original ordinance makes it difficult for me to carry out those responsibilities. The amendment makes it impossible. Not only are other businesses off limits um, by the 1,000-foot buffer zone, but there's currently no way for me to even know where that buffer zone is. I cannot care for Patty. I cannot go pick up prescriptions for her. Um, she fears, as you'll hear soon, um, that I might be locked up if I take her to a hospital. Okay, So it appears to me that this commission will go out of its way to continually offer harsher and harsher punishments to registered citizens, all in the guise of protecting the public, when in fact these ordinances and amendments do no such thing. Okay, Patty cannot risk spending a night alone because I'm locked up in jail. It could end badly for her, and that would be on your head. I pray that this commission will realize the burden these ordinances and amendments put on all citizens, not just registered ones, and do the right thing and repeal them respectfully. Thank you. Patty Panzerino, and after Patty, Brian Walsh. You're fine. I'm elevating. <laughs> Just don't put that to the okay. Thank you for your patience. Move. Uh, you might be able to move the mic. I'm not sure if it's portable or not. Yeah. That's as far as it goes. Okay, hold on. I don't have a very loud voice. That's okay. Can I think we can me? hear you. Point it this way. The, the. That's it? Okay. Good morning. I have spent many vacations here in Bavard County since 1997. 
my family lived in Melbourne Beach. I fell in love with this area. And for the past six years, I've been living in Palm Bay, which is a dream come true. Vincent Rinaldi is my primary caregiver and life partner who knows my specific needs. He has been my primary caregiver for 12 years, which includes six years here in Palm Bay. I won't talk about the fact that because of your proximity law, there are many places to visit for fun and entertainment that I am now allowed to go with Vincent as my caregiver. The purpose of my testimony here is to inform you of the punitive nature of this law that not only affects registered citizens, but their employers, families, and loved ones. Vincent cannot bring me to medical appointments, cannot bring me to CVS to get prescriptions, cannot bring me to my medical equipment provider because they are all within a thousand feet of a school, playground, park, or daycare center. All the above makes my life difficult and quite limited, but there is one factor here that is potentially life threatening for me. I am affiliated with Holmes Regional Medical Center, which is also within the thousand foot parameters, which limit registered citizens. My fear is possible illness or injury, which requires me to go to the hospital and or be admitted to the hospital. My disability, spinal muscular atrophy, require specific protocols that most hospital workers and clinicians are not familiar with. I can provide you data and information to prove that, if you wish. Oops, I just lost my place. Um, for example, I have very specific ways I need to be positioned and assisted because of respiratory issues, dangers of aspiration, and acquiring injuries. Throughout my life, any time I have been hospitalized, it was imperative to have my own personal caregiver with me the whole time throughout my hospital stay. The thought that Vincent could be arrested for being there with me terrifies me, terrifies me. This is life-threatening to me, an American citizen living in Bavard County with a disability. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Walsh. Oh, that's okay. No interest in the rest of the meeting. <laughs> Commissioner Tavaya? Yeah, do you want to go quickly on the record and let us know you're not affiliated with the folks that came before you? I have no affiliation with anybody here. That's probably good. That's clear because they're all departing at the same time. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, my name is Brian Walsh. I'm here on behalf of my neighbors in the village of Sun Tree. Uh, about two years ago, uh, our landscapers, who know a lot about trees, cut down a bunch of dangerous trees. Uh, maybe about 10, I don't really know the number. They were dead, they were broken, they were breaking driveways, they were damaging houses. We had some houses, many driveways were broken by the trees. We had one house in particular where the tree roots got under the house undermined the plumbing, and they had to break through the floor in the living room to repair the plumbing. Uh, another house, a branch fell off a tree and went through a windshield. Uh, so these trees have done a lot of damage. Somebody reported uh, that we had cut down the trees to the county, and uh, with that, uh, they came out and put down a program that we have to implement. 
uh, and I gave you the basic guidelines of the, the program. But this program, in essence, is going to cost 165000 plus an additional 30000 to put in a well. They're requiring us to plant 265 trees throughout our community. We already have a good number of trees already. We just removed a dozen, give or take, of dangerous dead trees. One tree had been hit by lightning. They were no good. They were hurting people. My neighbor across the street, one of the trees fell in a storm, crashed through a cinder block wall in his house, significantly doing damage. Uh, I'm asking you to reverse this decision to impose these strict rules, and I gave you the outlines of them, on the community. They're very expensive. Many, most of our residents are senior citizens on fixed incomes. And this works out to approximately $30 a month if they were able to finance it. It's 195, 200,000. That has to be paid out over five years according to this plan. Uh, you know, they're generous. They let us take five years to replace the trees. But that's an abhorrent uh, budget kicker to these people. And we're not even allowed to pick the type of tree, location of the tree, or anything else. They're dictating the type of tree, where it's to be planted. Uh, in addition to that, there's a border between our community and the next community where neighbors have swimming tools and nice backyards. It's wooded. A lot of the trees are these uh, Australian peppers or something like that. They're mandating that we clear cut it and rip all of these trees out. We don't even know where the borderline is between the two communities, to be honest. So that means we're going to have to go to the expense of an extra survey. This is a tremendous hardship on the community. And it creates an eyesore and removes a big privacy barrier. So I appreciate I your time. Have you talked to the staff or your commissioner in uh, your area? The uh, people in charge have basically told our board they dare not challenge them or else. That's not true. I mean, I would encourage you to reach out. Commissioner Smith, I'm sure it's on tree, right? Who? Commissioner Smith, you know. I um, haven't spoken to him. Uh, I, would, I would reach out to him, and if I'm <clears throat> sure the county staff would work with you. I'm not sure exactly the situation, but I would definitely try to get with staff and see. Maybe it can better be explained. I don't know that there's a remedy, but. Well, my hope is that you'll reverse this mandate that we put in 260 trees. That's a lot of trees. Yeah. You know, it, it's not like we, we removed 10, 12 trees. I don't even know how many. I haven't noticed any difference in the property. But, you know, to replace 260 trees for 10 trees is out of balance. They're looking for a tremendous amount of canopy. Well, canopy is shade. We have grass. Grass buries CO2 better than trees do. I happen well, to find out in my research. Again, I would encourage you to meet with the commissioner and maybe meet with staff and they can kind of go through things. You can always talk to staff and you can always talk to your commissioner. Okay. There's never an or else provision. We well, you're, this is actually my first contact. And yeah. uh, uh, I just need to get this stopped because we're under the thumb to get this project started. And it's a awesomely large project that the community does not want to do. Okay. Do we have a, maybe give them your contact information? Sure. Somebody? Yeah. But can they give Jim or John, get his contact information? Yeah. We can forward it to the commissioner. Maybe staff can work with you guys. Okay. Okay. All I right. appreciate your time. Um, uh, I hope we get positive consideration for you because this is a very, very hard burden on the members of the community. All right. I have a Victor Doswit, and after Victor, Caroline Corbett, and that's it for public comment. Hi. Go ahead. Hi. Thank you. I don't know the name of the ordinance. My name is Victor, or Arthur Victor Dodds White, and I'm addressing the sex offender ordinance. And my problem is I have a neighbor. I've been a, a jail ministry and prison ministry for about uh, 20 some years in, here in Brevard County in Orlando. So I meet some of these sex offenders and some of them have very minor charges. 
including my neighbor who lives three doors from me, uh, he was in a situation where uh, he was t just over the, just became an adult and he was at a party in his partying days. Now it's, they're long gone. He's a very mature adult. He's one of the most trusted men, uh, friends I have. But uh, he had sex with this girl at a party and then she accused him of rape. And then uh, of course he couldn't do anything because she would have been contempt of court if she changed her, uh, her story. But anyway, since for all these years he's been on these tremendous restrictions and now with this whatever they're gonna pass, it's gonna be even more a heavier burden yet. I have another friend who's got a very minor, the problem with this or, the uh, sex ordinance is they don't distinguish between serious offenses and minor offenses. And so the two friends I'm very acquainted with know their backgrounds, know the whole story, and I'm convinced of their truth because I know these men and their integrity. Uh, and the problem is they're being classified with very serious sex offenders and now they have to suffer the same punishment that the other ones may justly deserve, but they don't deserve it and I feel for them, my heart hurts for them. And I just want to plead for their cause and trust that the county will make the right decision on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Caroline Corbett. Caroline Corbett. She may have left. Yep. I don't see Caroline here and I don't see anybody waving their hands. So we'll move on to public hearings. Yep, Commissioner Pritchett, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Tobacco, can I ask you a question? You were on the um, state of Florida government for, for a long time. As far as um, levels of, of what they do for the sexual offenders, that comes from the state. Am I correct on that? Or you guys kind of lay out a lot of items from the state, what the state does? Madam Chair. Go ahead. Yes. Um, part of my being part of the Florida legislature and then part uh, of the time I was there, we dealt with those uh, quote unquote Romeo and Juliet uh, laws out there that looks at what uh, appeared as this gentleman may have been speaking with. I don't want to get too much into it because uh, in all honesty, I think I might have voted the other way on it, but it takes care of that, you know, 1917 type of scenario that, that, that you hear. Um, but to go off that, there was a constitutional amendment, um, uh, amendment four a few years back, I was strongly opposed to it. This one was the, the, the amendment that re, re uh folks uh, that had uh, committed felonies. Uh, I was on the minority side of that, so that's now in our Constitution. However, even the folks who were pushing for this, the, the, the people that it, I don't want to say had made terrible decisions, I'm probably better to say terrible people, uh, recognized that there were two groups of people that were so heinous that they didn't even want to be associated with the, them. Those two groups of people that 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 they didn't that they didn't want to be associated with were murderers and sex offenders. So that one did pass, and I voted against that one. I it's part of our constitution, so absolutely I'll hold it. But I just want to let you know that Florida has already said overwhelmingly that they were much kinder than I would be, but they uh, saw that those two groups of folks were so bad, and the, their crimes were so heinous, that they never should have the right uh, to, to, to vote again. Also, you know, I'll throw in my two cents, you shouldn't ask me a question, but I, th I think um, it's pretty unfair for uh, decisions that they made in the past that they compare us to the atrocities of, of, of Hitler and blaming us for potential deaths for decisions that were not made by, uh, predicated by any of us up here. So I'm sorry, um, this was something that uh, I brought forward. I think that our uh, children um, are uh, precious and innocent and anyone that, that, that takes that away is absolutely horrific at the, at the time they take that innocence away. And, and, and yes, there are greater people with much more forgiveness than me, but that's something uh, that, that I, don't, I don't have that level of, of compassion. Uh, the recidivism rates are through the roof. And um, 
and 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 for that, uh, I apologize that that you had to uh, um, be compared to that for an action of that I brought uh, to the to the board. Thank you, sir. I I, I do want to note that some of this issue we're discussing is, is allowing people to come here for public comment. The problem is we're so close to schools that it's, it's created some obstacles that um, the county attorney has been working through trying to find ways to give notice. I, I do want to um, just say though, you know, people go in and they serve their time. They can come back out and live, but there's some things you do, you never gain trust back. And I will always err on the side of kids. So if there's ever an opportunity to protect children, I'm, I'm in with Commissioner Tobias and Commissioner Zonka on that. So, you know, people live their lives and do what they need to do, but we're going to do our best to make sure there's not any opportunity for um, vulnerable population to, to ever become victims. And I do feel so, so bad for victims. And I've, I've lived um, a long life of trying to help people get better. And it's very rare people ever get completely well on the other side of that. So um, just wanted to make those comments. And I, I do feel really sad for the families that have to continue to carry a lot of weight and a lot of pressure from, from past things that have happened. And I wasn't going to say anything because I feel very impassioned about this as well. And I didn't want to say anything that was, you know, too harsh, I guess. But, you know, when you're released from prison, whether it be, you know, whatever kind of crime, felony, whatever, you, there's rules of probation. When you commit a sex crime, because I, I noticed how they conveniently called themselves registered citizens. And I was half tempted to ask them if they were commenting on their voter registration or their sexual predator or sexual offender status. But I think what bothered me the most, is, and Commissioner Tobias brought it up, was being, cared, being um, compared to Adolf Hitler, when in actuality, you know, for the one guy 22 years prior, you know, he committed a crime at 52 years old and, and then got up here and acted like the victim. So I have little sympathy for that, especially the guy that came up here and, and wore a uniform and demanded these rights, and he was the same guy that compared us to Hitler. So I have a feeling had he committed those crimes while in service to this country, he would not be up here in that uniform today. So... It's sad because I think it's a, I'm, I'm just sad that he wore the uniform and, and got up here and complained that he has to be a registered sexual predator in the state of Virginia. And if you do a little research, you'll see that sexual predators are a whole new level yet of sex offenders. So I don't sympathize and I'll always err on the side of caution and I just don't care. It's not a, it's not a simple robbery. It's not a bad choice as a teenager and it's not a, it's not a something that you can easily recover from. And, and for the victims of those crimes, I'd love to see those those guys come up here and talk about how their lives are changed forever. Then hear somebody complain about how they can't go somewhere because they worry that they'll get, you know, they'll violate our sex offender ordinance. So I'll just, I'm going to stop now. All right. Moving on. You opened the, <laughs> the can of worms, Commissioner Bridget. All right, I think believe we're moving on to item H1. Good morning, commissioners. H1 is a petition to vacate a public utility easement at 442 Puffin Drive, Barefoot Bay Mobile Home, um, the Solace Family Trust in District 3, requesting a public hearing to vacate two public utility easements. Uh, this is uh, two six foot wide public utility easements between um, two properties uh, to build a uh, new garage and a breezeway. There are no objections or issues. Okay. All right. Chair, so, so moved. Commissioner Tobias. I have a motion by Commissioner Tobias for approval, second by Commissioner Pritchett, and I have no cards. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item H2. I'll let staff explain it and then go on to public comment. I love the jacket, Ian. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning. So item H2 is the first public hearing for our consolidated five-year plan and annual action plan, which covers our CDBG program and our joint home consortium program with uh, the cities of Palm Bay, Melbourne, Cocoa, and Titusville. This first public hearing, there is no vote. This is an opportunity for the public for us to solicit input into the planning process, the final version of which will be brought back to the board on August 2nd. There is another opportunity, a public meeting that will be taking place on the 19th, two days from now, 
in the Space Coast room in this building on the second floor at 4.30 in the afternoon, early evening. Again, this is basically to provide the framework for the activities that are going to be done through those two programs and funded through those two programs. We do have in the audience uh, Joel Warren with our consulting group, uh, Cloudburst, who's here to answer any uh, process questions. Okay, I have a public comment card, Robert Kimklowski. Good morning. I'm here to talk about the community block grants and the community, community land trust. So in the Brevard Charter right now, there's a proposal for a trust for a um, actual uh, receiving federal and state subsidies and funding to retain uh, the land value of the community. So the community land trust would set up a program that would retain a 99 year lease and the Brevard County would retain the land, but then the recipient of either the SHIP or the HUD funding would then gain equity of the home, the improvements, and they could sell in a year and Brevard County would win and the person that receiving, the recipient receiving the subsidy would win. So I'm just wondering if you guys have heard of CLTs and if that could play into this proposal at all. All right, is that it? That's everything. Thank you. Ian? I wasn't sure if you wanted to respond again because it's just the solicit input. I will tell you that our Affordable Housing Council is looking at a number of different types of activities to expand what we're currently doing, and the community land trusts are a part of that discussion. Great. Awesome. I have no other cards. An H1. I don't have a card. Oh. Usually we don't take cards after the items already, after the public hearing is closed, but that's fine. Good morning, Kristen Marti, Coco resident, District 1. And I wasn't necessarily planning to speak today, but because there was so little public input I want to um, add on this, I do intend to come back on Thursday. But I'm interested in this topic. I like that the HUD program requires public input and, and participation in it, and as a requirement of the funding, they do that. And I'd like to see more public input into the process. I see very little public input into the process. It seems to me more like it's a checkbox in order to obtain funding. And I would like to see more outreach and more goals and more people weighing in on this. And uh, in particular, there's, um, there's wording in some of the HUD background about reaching out to vulnerable populations. I'm in a non-vulnerable population and I find it very hard to get the information. For example, the, the uh, plan here is, the former plan is not available online. Someone came into the Coco Cares uh, Facebook group and asked where's the former plan so that they could start reviewing that in order to prepare for a meeting like this. And I went and looked at the Brevard website and it's not there. So why can't the citizens easily find information? There's also a Brevard County uh, public participation plan and that should be available on the website so that the public could at least know about it and have more opportunity. I'd also like the public to have more opportunity to review the materials. I personally, I was able to obtain the RFP that I requested in conjunction with the block program after getting the invoice for $159, which I had spoken of previously. So while I was glad to get that information, I really think it should be easy to obtain. If the public is interested enough to look into these programs, to do some of the research, and to show some interest in it, I think it should be easy. And I would, I do want to give a, a positive commendation to the Cloudburst uh, representative who did, um, through COCO, who did spend some time with me, so I appreciated that gesture. But I really think that um, all of our Municipal, the municipalities involved and the county could do a lot more to include the public. I would like my comments included in the plan. I will be looking for the plan when it comes out on June 6th. That's when it's supposed to be released for the 30-day period. I plan to be here on Thursday, and I think it's a real opportunity to put our citizens back into the community and invite their input. Thank you. Ian, do you want to comment on the public input? I, I, I would. Uh, just you can sit. 
We have multiple opportunities for public input throughout the course of the year. Like I said, this is a five-year overarching plan, but we do an action plan every year. So there's every public meeting through CDBG, uh, the Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee, through the Affordable Housing Committee. We do meetings out in our communities. We have seven identified strategic areas throughout the county where we do community meetings. Uh, in addition to that, while we don't have the plans on the website, they are available electronically. They are HUD forms, so they don't quite meet our requirements for um, Section one, uh, 508 compliance, so we make those available when requested. Explain what that Section 8. It's, it's a requirement that documents meet a certain guidelines for ADA compliance. Yeah, so it's they not are because readable. we don't want to put them online. Correct, but they Thank are you. also available on the HUD website. So HUD has our plans available. Um, so there are multiple opportunities. There is a citizen participation plan. That citizen participation plan is also available upon request. The participation plan actually guides us in the number of public hearings we have and all of these other opportunities for input. Okay. Commissioner Tobias? Uh, Madam Chair, quick question. Uh, Mr. Golden, uh, public record request of $107, which is quite a bit of money, um, was brought up. If I, not I, if a member of the public was to ask for one of these plans. You've given a good reason it's not online, um, but would there be a public record uh, charge just for the, the plan or could that be done in the 15 minutes? So I didn't want to speak to that because I'm, I'm not 100% certain it was this case, but that was brought to my attention and there was actually no charge that was given to, to the, that records request. I do not know if it was the same one. If we have the documents electronically, there typically will not be any charge. Okay, and, and help me here. How many pages are we talking about on? Well, let, let, me, let, me ask, let me ask this. For if this does come up, do you mind scanning those f for me, for my office? So if it, does, if it does come up, then there will be no public record. Well, uh, and, and I will. Uh, public record request fee. I will also say that every time we've brought those plans to the board, they've been attached to the agendas. So they are also available through that process. And so we, when we bring this plan back to the board, it will be attached to the agenda. Thank you for your diligence, diligence on this. All right, I have no more cards. Motion by Commissioner Pritchett for approval, second by Commissioner Tobia. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item H3. Musical chairs. Uh, Madam Chair, um, item H3 is the second public hearing for the Cedar Lakes development. Uh, the rationale of this is that due to the capacity at the St. John's wastewater plant um, being over 85%, it triggers an ordinance. So as a result, in order to work with the developer and having a what would be a three-phase project by ordinance being completed as one is the driver of this agreement. All right, I have a motion for approval by Commissioner Pritchett, second by Commissioner Tobia. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item I-1. Mr. Tobia. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at the March 8th regular board meeting, the board voted to consolidate five board, uh, five Brevard County Parks boards into two advisory boards. Those were the newly titled North Brevard Commission on Parks and Rec and the South Central Parks and Rec Board. On May 3rd, Commissioner Pritchett raised some valid and helpful concerns regarding the Cocoa West Recreation Complex Advisory Committee, which was previously voted on to consolidate into the new South Central Park and Rec Board. So uh, at the last meeting, I brought forth several options to address the concerns which I spoke about on the May 5th meeting. Those options have not changed. I'll be more than willing to go over them should there be any questions. However, uh, I did, uh, my office did go a little bit further. Uh, we emailed, we called, and we sent hard letter, hard uh, snail mail letters to each of the five members of the Cocoa West Recreation uh, Complex Advisory Committee to hear what their input was. Well, we spoke to uh, five members. Uh, one was uh, traveling and didn't have, 
the hard copies of, of any of that stuff. But we heard very, very similar things uh, from four board members. That would, those would be Miss Sharon Spikes, Miss Leatrice Brothers, Miss Betty Wells, and Mr. Ezeel Battle. Uh, they expressed uh, no issues with becoming part of the larger committee, but preferred to remain uh, the responsible voice for decisions made uh, for the Cocoa West Recreational Complex. Uh, the fifth member, uh, as previously mentioned, uh, Pastor Jesse Guest, uh, I was, he was going to get back with us after is what his opinion were. So um, if that's to take place, option one, uh, probably doesn't work, but option two or three would work for four and potentially five of the committee members. It would work for the plan that uh, I had uh, initially put forth to consolidate. So I think uh, either plan two or plan three um, would, uh, would work. Um, it's just a new development on what uh, transpired at the last meeting. Uh, Madam Chair, so I'd like to hear any input and make a motion. I don't care which uh, to either option two or either option three. All right, I have a card. Sharon Spikes. Good morning, I'm Sharon Spikes. Um, I, um, I'm addressing the same issue, uh, the Coco West Recreation Complex Advisory Board, which I also serve on that board, District 1. Um, I did talk to uh, Mr. Bond, and um, what I heard this morning, uh, we would like to continue for you all to allow us to make the decisions in that area. And that's all I have to say on that. Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank and, you. And real quickly, um, I'd, uh, option two and option three, uh, I don't know if Mr. Bond, I'm sure he did a great job going over that, but I'd like to hear, you know, if, if you have a, a preference for one or the other. Either way, your board would have the ability to dictate what happens to that, the facility that you're currently there. It would give your five votes. Uh, the supermajority. In fact, what this plan would do would provide you with more voting power because now you could vote on other things that were outside uh, your direct facility, but important, I imagine, to your larger community. So the, the, the question is, would you, for it to go forward, would you like a simple majority of the five or would you like it to be unanimous of, of the five? Do you care as to which? I, I don't, I haven't followed your board, so I don't know if you normally make collective action as a five. I know we don't generally up here. So um, a majority may be easier, but it's completely up to you. And I, I wanna thank you for your service to not only the board, but uh, to getting back with us on your opinion. I just wanna make sure, you know, that whatever is best for you mm -hmm. happens. Well, I would like to allow all the members, all five, like you stated, I don't know if that was H2, was that H2, where we all would be able to make a decision? Madam Chair? In in either of them, you're making the decision. Right, okay. I, do you? It, one is you have to be unanimous, and mm -hmm. one is it's just a simple majority. I, I don't care which one. I believe it would be simple. That that's probably the yes, better of it. Yes. Ju okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Th thank After you. After I heard what you said, I'm like, I don't have to say anything. He already cleared. You already cleared well, it up, Commissioner. And I should have. I should have. It's my fault, Madam Chair. I should have called and reached out to you guys uh, first. But um, Commissioner Pritchett saved the day by by bringing this forward. So now your uh, your work will expand to other facilities, not just this one. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Pritchett. Commissioner Tapa, I uh, thank you for doing this, this extra leg work. You help with a lot of things. Um, so I would like to just throw out one little recommendation because we're going to have the Cocoa West vote just on the Cocoa West without the others. Maybe let them meet 30 minutes early before the rest of the board shows up so they can do that business and the rest of them can join them. That way they're already here on the facility and then you don't have the other ones here. 
Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's a okay. I, I certainly would like their input on the on on the larger board as well. So but they can stick around for that part. That way, you get this. One. I never even I never even thought about that. I think that's a wonderful idea. It's a great idea. Okay. So, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I would like to make a motion yeah, for option that. number three, uh, with the amendment provided by Commissioner Pritchett for the board meeting 30 minutes prior to uh, the meeting of the larger board. Second. All right, I have a motion by Commissioner Tobiah. The clerk get the motion, okay? Second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, item J1 was removed. Moving on to public comments, Anita Killen. Good morning. My name is Anita Killen, and I wasn't planning to speak today, but um, there was so much misinformation going around that I felt compelled to um, address some of that misinformation. Uh, first of all, when you were having the conversation about registered citizens, there were a few points that I'd like to correct. Number one, <clears throat> it was addressed that there's a Romeo and Juliet clause. That is true, they're, if their individuals are four years apart. Problem is, there are many people that are still on the registry because that amendment was passed after their conviction. And either they were unable to pay for court costs to have it changed again, or for whatever reason, maybe they've moved out of the state and Florida keeps them on the registry for life, even if they've moved. Um, there are still a lot of individuals that are on the registry for Romeo and Juliet cases. The second thing is, um, you mentioned that the state statute um, influenced the ordinance here in Brevard County, which is actually an exclusion zone ordinance which prohibits people uh, that are on the registry from living within a thousand feet of a school park, playground, or daycare center. and. Um, the state has nothing in it for an exclusion zone that is strictly Brevard County. You mentioned the individual who was wearing a uniform, by the way, that was his work uniform, and he was going back to work. You mentioned um, that Predator has a more severe, serious label than Offender. Let me share a story. There are many, many of them that I'm happy to share with you at a later date. But a more recent one was the individual who was working on International Drive on probation, working on International Drive. He lived close to the Brevard Orange County line past UCF. He was 20 minutes late getting home from work. They changed his, they violated him. They changed his uh, status from offender to predator for being 20 minutes late from work. Yes, ma'am. Um, I want to address the a uh, registered citizen versus, versus sex offender. A sex offender sounds like somebody who is currently offending at this time, much like a commissioner, a teacher, a police officer. Those are present roles that they are in. These individuals are not offending. They are not offenders. They are not predators in many cases. And uh, finally, um, the term even registered citizen barely even sums it up because they are registered, that is a true statement. However, they're barely citizens, particularly here in Brevard County. And uh, last, the last thing I'm going to make a point on is this one size fits all that we have here in Florida does not work. Any more than saying every politician is crooked, you know, or every doctor, you know, practices, um, uh, voodoo or whatever it is. I mean, Thank you cannot make blanket statements about individuals. And finally, we're, I'm here to educate. And I, and I realize, and the last point is, Your time I would really is up, and I have to be fair and, and I, stop I, I understand, but just let me finish my statement. I can't I understand. do that, because I would have to let everybody that gets up and talks, and I already let you I spoke more than three minutes. You. Thank you very much for your time.
I don't ever like to cut anybody off, but you know, we have those rules in place so we don't give favoritism to other people who want to speak longer. Moving on to board reports, I have no further public comment cards. No Mr. report. Vate? Ms. Jornby? No report. Commissioner Pritchett? No. Commissioner Tobia? No report. And I too have no report, so I want to thank everybody for attending today. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. Oh, no, no. Executive session before this adjournment or after? If, we, if I may just have a five minute recess, um, okay. I need to verify where our outside council is. Okay. All right. Thank All you. right, we're going to take five minutes. Our council is not here, sorry, not opposing council. <laughs> Wasn't even a long meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjourn this meeting. Yes, thank you. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida. Space Coast Government Television or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.